So basically, uh, after doing the bullions, there's a lot of uh, cleanup work that's going to have to be done for this. And uh, you can see that I've got some verts that needed to be welded up, just weld those things up. But a little bit later in the video, um, mine actually crashed on me whenever I started to uh, take some of this, those holes that were bullioned out and uh, fix those things up. And I was trying to add, uh, with the multi-cut tool, some support edges, things like that. And so you might see something kind of odd happen for that. But through the duration of this video, I started to uh, basically do things where I was uh, building the support edges. So whenever you tap 3 for the smooth mesh preview, it's going to actually hold those different edges, right? And you can see uh, this is what I was talking about where Maya crashes. And sometimes you're lucky enough to be able to get the temporary file that Maya makes. So that'll be found in, if you go to your C drive, go to users, your username, in my case is Enzo Guerrero, app data, go to local, and then go to temp. And within there, you'll find uh, any of Maya's like crash files and stuff like that. So again, Maya has to actually generate that file. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But um, yeah, the only thing I could say is uh, make sure you save often for this, right? Um, the other thing is with these uh, kind of circular patterns, you know, that we talked about using um, cylinders that have eight sides to them, right? So you can see this pattern that starts to generate from this. You need to make sure that you have uh, edges that flow out from um, each one of those eight sides, and it kind of builds this pattern that you can take a circular object and build out into a square kind of format by taking the verts and straightening them up and pulling them out. So, you know, um, knowing that, uh, got to build a similar structure here. But any of these edges that you want to hold and keep them kind of hard edged, uh, you know, with a slight bevel, this is where we add those what's uh, called support, support edges and support uh, edges are going to allow you to do the smooth mesh preview but it's still going to hold the shape and you know so here again I was having just a lot of problems with um, what the boolean tool generated as far as geometry so I had to kind of hand cut some of this stuff out delete a lot of faces and then rebuild the topology it was a little bit trickier on the bottom parts because there remember we built that uh, kind of a little bit of an angle that we had on there and these shapes down here at the bottom where we've got this kind of wedge that's cut out, this is especially kind of tricky because there's a lot of edges and they all need support edges on there. Um, so it took a little while to figure out that pattern. I think I did a little bit of pieces here and there, kind of figured out a section and did one side and then basically, um, you know, had to kind of build the other side because um, our geometry, how it flows off from uh, the front in the back they're not the same kind of size uh, for the um, circular parts and things like that so it had it you know be treated almost as if it's its own special little thing for both of those so beyond these pieces I'm trying to f think of anything else that's like really kind of important to kind of tell you um, you know just just keep an eye on how to make these support structures, keep an eye on where there's uh, a lot of geometry that's created to make the support structures, how sometimes I'll take the verts, merge them together, delete an edge out uh, to build a quad for some of that stuff, and you'll see that happen quite a bit on some of the corners, like what's going on here, merge those verts together, things like that. Um, but other than that, you know, um, I really wish the modeling and with the symmetry was a little bit more predictable. But uh, because it wasn't always, um, I was basically, you know, modeling one side and just continuing to mirror over and over again. Um, and then the other part is with those support edges, depending on how close they are to the uh, to the edge that you're building the support edge to, you know, that gives you the the roundness factor. So it's just a matter of continually modeling, checking, and mirroring across until. We'll eventually get to the uh, the final shape for this and uh, kind of be done with it. But um, yeah, so I think those are the things to kind of watch out for. Um, also, uh, in the video later, I'll be taking those uh, circular pieces that were cut out with the boolean and selecting their edges and doing a, a bevel on those uh, to get edge loops and things like that. So I think you should be pretty familiar with the beveling 
tools by now, um, so I don't think that should be a complex thing for you to do. On there I try to do that trick where we reduce down uh, the amount of edges like that, but uh, the geometry that was producing was kind of not exactly flat all the way down the face of that. Um, so this is where I built some different geometry kind of flowing out this way for that to kind of hold that shape. So again, it's just going to be a bit more of the same, and um, it's just uh, a matter of time and how much uh, how much shape that you have to resolve to get everything to kind of hold its shape and do uh, the rounding on the corners for that.